If you plan on spending time outdoors, it's important to keep safety top of mind this time of year. Toro family medicine physician Dr. Meredith Maxwell joins us to explain three types of heat illness, heat stress, heat exhaustion, and stroke. And I, I think uh, Dr. Maxwell uh, will uh, take these uh, one at a time if we could. Heat stress, what is that? Sure. Heat stress is when your body is your body temperature is like 98.6. You kind of get sweaty. You could have some muscle spasms. You could have that prickly heat rash on your skin. Um, you know that's the least severe type of heat um, symptom. And really, it's rest, go into a cool place, maybe drink some water or a sports drink. So you know that's the most common type that so we have. Let's talk now about stepping it up when you have heat exhaustion that's starting to get serious. It is, it is. So, you know, that's more of um, lots more sweating. Your pulse is affected. It kind of gets rapid and weak. Your temperature could be like 101. Your core temperature, you kind of feel faintish. You feel um, like headache, nausea type of thing. Um, you know, you want to go to a cool, shady area as soon as you can. Lie with your feet above the level of your heart. Fluids, remove your excess clothing, your excess gear, um, cool compresses. If you have uh, access to a fan, you want a fan near your armpits and your body. Um, you know, athletes should typically recover around 20 minutes from this type of heat um, exhaustion. And if not, you need to proceed to your emergency room. All right, then finally, the, the more serious one, what's, what's the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke? So there's a lot of different subtleties between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. One is the core body temperature is usually around 105, very, very high. And you have more of a collapse, altered mental status, the, per the person not really making sense. Um, there's a lack of sweating at this point. The skin is really cool, pale, and mottled. Um, the, the, the regular pulse is there. You might have some fainting. You might have some convulsions. This is the most serious type of heat um, symptom. And you need to get to the emergency room right away. Call 911. And if you have others around you, you want to like rest in a cool, shady area. If you have access to like a child's pool or water hose, you want to you know soak them down as much as possible. Be careful of their airway because they might not be totally with it, um, you know, and if available, ice packs um, to the body but, until 911 gets there. If you there. see somebody in a heat uh, stroke situation, you're pretty sure that's what it is, something like a child's <laughs> pool. It, exactly, and, and they usually are not with it, so it's progressed to the point where they are very confused, even maybe even seizures at that point. You know, people who work outside um, or, for example, say ace air conditioning guys, uh, yeah. oftentimes you'll see, you know, they stock up on the fluids. They understand it's an issue. They feel it. And I've seen people take precautions. But this is the kind of thing that can sneak up on you, can't it, if you are, A, not used to it, or uh, let's face it, if you're a little older and, and a little older can be 40 and you're not, you know, you're not 20 anymore. Not exactly, and it's what play. you're used to, too. So, like, if you come to a different climate and you're not used to that climate, it can be tricky. So, you know, you want to wear light clothing, um, breathable clothing. You want to do lots of fluids. Avoid caffeine, coffee, alcohol, because those can make you lose your fluid. And those patients that are on, like, a water pill or have problems with heart failure or you need to limit your water, you need to talk to your doctor carefully about the balance of that, especially right. in the summertime. Certainly an issue this time of year. Dr. Meredith Maxwell, thanks from Toro as always. You're welcome.